how's it going, everybody? Um, I'm about to do an Ords installation with one of my Podman containers, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you how I do this. Uh, it's not like substantially different than a normal installation, but the little Podman spin I thought was pretty interesting, or at least merited a standalone video. Um, so let's let me go ahead and get started here. So um, first thing I'll do is I'll open up Terminal here, and let me go ahead and get the Podman machine um, up and running. Increase the size so you can actually see what's going on. Um, okay, so while that's doing its thing, we'll head over to the Oracle landing page. If you go to oracle oracle.com slash ords, um, it just takes you to our landing page. And then from there, I'm going to go to the download page and download the, the latest product build zip. So it doesn't take that long. And then head over to my downloads and I'll go ahead and unzip this. Here's the contents of everything that's in that product folder. And actually, I just saw that our Podman machine is up. So I'll go back over here and um, show you the different containers that I have. I pulled these down from the Oracle container registry, but up until this point, I've been using the 21.3 enterprise database, um, but I'm gonna retire that and adopt the 23 database. Um, I already have the ORDs installed in here, but we're going to do in this database. Um, and we need to actually get the database up and running. So um, I can do that with, um, if I can remember how to spell, I can do that with this command, um, probably my container start, and then I'll do 23 free DB. And you can see that it's doing its thing in the background. So this, if you look at status, it's, it's starting. Okay. While that's starting, we'll go and start working on the configuration, which is set up the different folders that ORDS needs, um, and then set some environment variables. Um, it's pretty easy though. So let's, let me just show you here. You may choose to do this a little bit differently. I suppose you could put these folders wherever you want, but I've done some reading and it looks like for most of these like tools, utilities that you install, they're recommending you go to you know, you go to your hard drive here and then users and you can see I've got shared and then I've got myself here. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to drill down into this C Hoina folder here and I'm going to put this into the library. It just seems like a lot of, a lot of these tools are the recommendation is to put this in the library, but again, you can put this wherever you want. And then from here, I just changed the representation to the icons so you could see a little bit better, but I'm going to create an ORDS folder, right? And then in there, I'm going to create this ORDS config folder. And then I think the easiest way to, to create this product folder is just dr drag this ORDS latest over here. And then I'm just going to rename it um, products folder. Now, this should make sense here. So I'm library, I'm in ORDS, I have the config folder, which at this point, it won't have anything in it until ORD starts the installation and then the product folder. So I have all that set up. Now what I need to do is I need to set these environment variables. We need to be able to tell ORDs where to look for the configuration folder. And then when your terminal starts up, it's going to need those binaries for ORDs. So we do that um, by adjusting or amending the uh, Z profile file here. I already have SQL CL up here. And then I've actually already populated these ones, but I'll show you the easy way for me to figure out what these file paths are. So let me just reduce this here. And then just so you can see kind of both screens. All right. So say for instance, the, I want to figure out what the file path is for the config. Easy way for me to, is just drag this in here. Just shows me the file path. So if I copy paste that, put it right next to this, this one, and this one are the same. I'm not going to change it because it's already there. And then for the product folder, I need the bin. So I'm going to just drag that. Again, that's just an easy way for me to um, to find that, that file path. And I could put this in here, but you see like this and this is the same. Um, two more things in here. The It's got to be ords underscore conf, underscore config because ords is looking for that. And then here's how the path is um, is written. However, for this, you see how the binary is a little bit different. We have the money sign path colon and then the file. So just keep that in mind. And then I'm done with that. So I'll save, close out of this. Um, in our docs, we say to close out your terminal session, which I'm doing, and then restart with a new one. 
Um, that way your, your terminal will pick up those changes that you made in the Z profile file. So if I go to Podman PS, kind of doing all this simultaneously because I was I'm waiting for this status to change the healthy that 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 shows me that the database is up and running. Now that that's ready, I can go ahead and issue my ords install command. Let me increase the size here so you can see. So you see we have this interactive installer for ords. A lot of a lot of these steps you'll see like so you see choose and then the brackets and then two. Um, these are like the default settings that ords is recommending. I don't have any database pools. Um, I don't even have ords in, so I want to do this. I want to do this install. I can either write to number two, or I can I can select number two and hit enter, or I can just hit enter, and it'll just recognize that I'm just accepting whatever the default is. Okay. Um, for this database connection type, I'm gonna do the default, which is the basic um, local host, and this right here up here, this. 40.0.0.0 is the same thing. So I'm just gonna accept that. This is where it starts to deviate a little bit. And um, I just wrote a post about demystifying the, these ports, these Podman ports. Uh, and this kind of tripped me up. So I'm gonna leave that link in the, in the description so you can review that because it was confusing for me, but maybe not for you. Um, I'm actually gonna choose uh, 33431 um, because that's the like, that's the incoming and outgoing port on my MacBook. Now, if I'm looking at the Podman container, everything is coming in and out of the Podman container from port 1521, which is what you would expect. Um, but I'm I'm basically signing in through my MacBook to the Podman container. So that's why I need to choose 33431 as opposed to 1521, okay? So 33431. Um, another tricky part here, I think this ORCL is pretty generic for most of our databases. However, if you look at the documentation in the Oracle Container Registry, the, the names are a little different. So at the container level, so like the container database, it's actually called free, um, but the pluggable database is free PDB1, right? It just, it, it automatically comes with that, that single PDB. You can obviously add more, but I want to install this ORDS at the pluggable database level. That way in the future, if I want to create maybe like pluggable database two and pluggable database three, I can do that and I can do like rolling updates to ORDS. You know, like maybe I have like pluggable database two and three that are running. Meanwhile, I'm updating pluggable database one. And then once that's updated, I can kind of do these rolling updates, right? So for this, I'm gonna do free PDB one. For the administrator, sys, you just type in sys, and it'll say, what's the password for sys, sysdba? Um, I've already changed this password. There's a script that's included in the Podman images, so you can change it to a password that you want. Mine is password one, two, three, four. Okay, this JDBC driver, it's, we're connecting using localhost and then this port 33431 and then into the pluggable database, this free PDB one. So that's good. That's what we want. We've got sys aux um, default table space. Just, just hit enter for that. Same thing here. Hit enter for temp. Um, and now, in most cases, you're going to want to choose one. If you want to sign into the GUI, the database actions, the, graph, the, the browser-based client, uh, and in addition to all the other stuff that you see there, just select one. I, I always select one. And then it's asking me if I want to deploy this in standalone mode. Like if I want to just kind of continue to do work, like if I want to rest enable users or something like that, um, I can do that. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just choose one. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with HTTPS for right now. Um, so I'm just going to select one and then you could choose your port, but 8080 is like the default. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and choose that. And then that's it. So now you just wait for all the scripts to execute. You'll see at the very end, it'll show you like it, the elapsed time for how long it took to do all this. And so you can see like we've got that final commit complete here. And then this line right here says um, we completed the installation and then here's the version. And then that was the elapsed time. So it's 25 seconds. And then while I was talking, ORDS actually is initialized, which means it's running in standalone mode. It has that, that Jetty server. Now I haven't REST enabled any schemas or anything, but what I can do is I can go over here and I can go to localhost slash ORDS and it'll take me to the landing page. 
So now I know Ords is running. If I was to try and go to SQL Developer Web or Database Actions, like um, this is just Firefox, just remembering some old things. But it, like I don't have any users that are that are REST enabled or anything. Um, I think I'll do another video on how to REST enable that user. Now that this is installed, I actually sh I'll actually go back to the the folders that we created. You can see the changes that were made to the configuration folder. Hopefully, this will start to make some sense of like what we actually just did here. So I'll go to ORDS and then the config folder. You can see the ORDS interactive installer, installer did all this. So let me expand some of this here. Nested underneath your databases is your default. We that's your that's your pool. So we just call it default. Now if you go in and you and you create more pluggable databases, they'll be in here under databases. And then global is basically everything at the container. This is applies to like these are the things that apply to all ORDs. So I'll just open this with text edits so you can see. These are just like the universal things that are gonna apply regardless of we're talking about a pluggable or a container. So you, we've got the database API enabled. Um, this is the port that the Jetty server is using in standalone, right? You remember when we did that? And I don't remember what step, but we, d we did that earlier. And now if I go back over here, I can look at like this pools information. Let me see if I can increase this a little bit here. So connection type is basic, you know, which is username, password. This is, again, this is localhost. You saw the port here. That's the service name, right? Um, we're using ORDS public user as the proxy user. So that's actually the, the, that's actually the guy that's doing all the rest stuff for you in the, in the database. Um, and then we have the REST enabled SQL here as well. SDW is SQL Developer Web, also known as Database Actions. I think more appropriately, officially it's Database, database Actions, but um, actually let me go all the way up here. If you remember in this step here, right, we chose number one. So the fact that we did that is basically what, what, what led to this, this entry key being populated here. So you can see how like in the interactive install, you're making all these choices, but it's actually, you know, we have scripts that are creating all this stuff for you, which is pretty nice. So that's it. Um, if you have any questions or anything, let me know. Just drop a question in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. You know, hopefully this is helpful and I will uh, see you on the next one. Thanks.